Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here talking to you about Quartermaster General 1914, uh, which is a World War I strategy game. And I just got this on a work trip, and I want to introduce the game and some of the mechanics to you. Um, and uh, then I'm going to do a playthrough. So uh, here's the game map. It's a standard map of the uh, significant theaters of war in Europe in World War I. And uh, it does include uh, all seven of the major powers uh, that uh, went to war. Um, United States, Britain, France, Italy, uh, Germany, Austria, uh, Russia, and the Ottomans. So I guess that's eight. And um, this is a fast-paced game that's played with a card deck. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is that... Um, uh, the cards are um, some of the nations share cards so Britain and the US share cards and in their deck some of the if cards will relate to the United Kingdom and some will relate to um, the United States and so uh, of course I'm not seeing a United States card here but um, some of these cards there there's a United States card so um, the player has to decide whether they're going to play. They have a hand, and they might not have cards for both countries in their hand, but if they do, they have to decide whether they're going to do something with the U.K. or the U.S. And so um, the U.K. and the U.S. share a deck. France and Italy share a deck. And also you can't see here, but the Austrians and the Ottomans share a deck as well, whereas the uh, Russians and the Germans have their own deck. So... Um, and each deck has about seven different types of cards, which you can see here with the Germans. Um, you have events, you have status cards, you have economic warfare cards, you have cards where you can build an army, where you can initiate a land battle, you have cards where you can build a navy, you have cards where you can initiate a sea battle. And uh, here's the basic uh, turn sequence and order of play. The Austrians and Ottomans go first, then Russia, and so on. And then in the turn sequence, um, you can do uh, first, and um, you don't have to do any of these, but um, you can do all of them, or none of them, or somewhere in between. On the draft step, if you don't have a build army or a build navy card, you can discard two of your cards uh, in order to search through your draw deck and uh, get a, a, a build army or a build navy card from your deck. Um, now, uh, the reason there's a cost for that and that's discarding two cards once you discard cards you basically can't get them back and once your your deck runs out um, then uh, you're obviously can't do much more as a as a power or a country and um, uh, also there's some penalties for um, if you have to discard and you don't have a card uh, there's victory point um, penalties for that um, so those are the basic so then um, the attrition step, you can discard a single prepared card with an attrition prepared symbol. I'll, I'll explain more what that means in a minute. The prepare step, you can prepare a single card from here, or you may unprepare one card. Um, and the draw step, you can draw cards from your draw deck until your hand has seven cards. So um, let's just go through uh, uh, what a turn might look like for Germany uh, in this game. And um, so the, let's say in the draft step, let's say this is their hand. Um, in the draft step, they don't do anything, and then in the play step, uh, they want to build an army. So let they play this card. They would put it here, and then they would build an army. Uh, so let's say they build it in Western Germany. Um, and then in the attrition step, they don't they don't do that one. And then in the prepare step, they can prepare a card. Now this prepare part is really important, where a lot of the strategy in the game comes in. You see these symbols down here. Those can be um, enabled through preparing a card. So let's say they just um, dis they just built an army, so they would discard this one. And let's say they wanted to prepare this, which is a sustained battle symbol. So they would put it face down in front of them, like that, and then that would be available for future use. And the reason that is important is because um, if you have one of these, you can use it um, to increase your chances of winning in battle. Um, so let's say the next turn, um, 
that the France, France had an army here. And let's say we had a, a, um, another land battle uh, that we played to initiate the land battle. You can't initiate a land battle without um, playing a land battle card, although some events um, or, uh, allow you to do that. Um, France could defend uh, itself by using a prepared card that has um, a shield symbol on it. Um, like the shield symbol on the bottom of the build army. And if they played that, Germany would have to play a sustained battle in response in order to counteract the effects of that and then allow the army to be eliminated. So that's why that is important. Um, and in the draw step, you know, you draw enough cards to get back up to seven. So in this case, we would draw two more. Let's say we got two more events and then we'd have back up to seven. So it's a very fast playing game. Uh, it probably takes each country two to three, maybe five minutes at most to play, and it moves very, very quickly. Um, the objective of the game is uh, to uh, have more victory points, and victory points are by and large um, secured by having um, an army uh, in one of these um, areas with a gold star. And so, um, and some cards or events allow you to add gold stars to certain countries. Like there's several cards that allow you to add a gold star to Greece. Um, one allows you to add a gold star to Persia. One Bulgaria. One Romania, etc. Um, some interesting mechanics in this game are especially with navies. So let's say Germany next turn built a navy, and you have to build uh, n basically on your supply line, and this is your ultimate supply source for Germany. So if they built an army here, then they could build a navy now in the North Sea with the adjacency. Um, but an interesting thing with that is, um, and let's change the example here. Let's say we had an army here, and then we built a navy here. Now, with a navy here, you can initiate a land battle in an adjacent country with a navy. Um, and so... Um, the Britain, in this case, would want to build their own navy here to protect the English Channel so the Germans couldn't do that. That really came into play in a game that I did down here, where Britain built a chain of navies all the way down here, um, and then used those navies to build an army in the Middle East in Anatolia and to attack Istanbul, although they could have attacked Istanbul directly um, from their, their navy here. Uh, same thing can happen here. The Austrians um, or the Italians can put a navy in the Adriatic Sea and then use that to attack Rome or Budapest. Uh, so it's creates a really interesting dynamic. And of course, that's the only way the U.S. can get across, which they didn't in my game. Um, but they have to build a, an army here first, then a navy, um, then another navy, and then an army here um, in order to get uh, across and join the war. So it's a really exciting game. Um, and, uh, and this is just a very broad overview of the game. I'll have a review after my playthrough uh, that I'll share with you. Um, but uh, just wanted to kind of give you an overview of the basic mechanics uh, of this game uh, before I get into it. So hope you enjoyed this. Admiral Seabass signing off.